in section 4.2, we're going to look at reduction of order. In the preceding section, we saw that the general solution of a homogeneous first order linear differential equation, which was of the form a2 y double prime plus a1 y prime plus a0 y equals to zero, is a linear combination of two solutions. We have y is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2, where y1 and y2 are solutions that constitute a linearly independent set on some interval i. In this next section, we will examine a method to determine these solutions when the coefficients of the differential equations are constants. So in this section, we're going to be focusing on constant coefficients. This method is straightforward, exercise in algebra. It kind of breaks down to a few cases um, that we'll cover very uh, quickly. Um, and it turns out, for example, that we can construct a second solution of our homogeneous equation, uh, provided that we know a non-trivial solution, y1, of the DE. So oftentimes, what involves happening here is we need to find just a single solution. So we need one solution that's non-trivial, meaning it can't be just a constant or can't be just a zero function. And if we're able to find that, then the idea is that the equation above, this equation here, can be reduced to a first order linear DE by means of a substitution. And that substitution is actually what's going to reduce the order. We're going from, if you look at the equation in example in one here, so this equation is a second order DE. We spent a lot of time in the previous section solving first order linear differential equations. So the idea is, is if we're able to somehow transform this thing via some kind of substitution, which we'll see in a minute, back into a first order differential equation, then we know how to solve those type. Okay. So the way this is going to work is as follows. Suppose we have a non-trivial solution to our second order differential equation. And let's suppose that that function is defined on an interval i. We're now going to look for a second solution, y2, um, so that the set consisting of y1 and y2 are going to be linearly independent on i. We recall from section 4.1, that if y1 and y2 are linearly independent, then their quotient is non-constant on i. That is, that y2 divided by y1 is some non-constant function of x, which allows us to write our second solution, this is the one that we're looking for, as some function multiple, u, let's call it u, of y1. This function u can be found by substituting y2 equals this into the differential equation and this is called the reduction of order because what it will lead to will be a first order differential equation for, to solve for the function u. So for a second order differential equation with constant coefficients, this is the approach. We want to come up with a, a solution to start with. So we want a solution y1. We then are going to set, we're going to find a second solution, let's call it y2. And we believe that y2 is going to be of the form u of x times y1, which is our first solution. We're going to plug this expression into the differential equation, and this will allow us to arrive at a first order ODE for the function u. Okay. Let's see how this works. So example one, let's suppose that we're told that y1 is equal to e to the x is a solution to y double prime minus y equals zero on the, the real numbers. Let's use reduction of order to find a second solution, y2. Okay. So to start off, we're going to suppose that y2 of x is going to be equal to some unknown function u times our first solution, y1 of x. That is that y2 is going to be u of x times e to the x. We now want to substitute this into our differential equation. So let's go ahead and, and do that. First of all, we're going to need the, the derivative of this. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to call it um, y, just to kind of save some, some writing here. So let's just call this y of x. If we take the first derivative, so y prime of x 
notice this is going to be a um, product rule. So it's going to be the derivative of u, I'm just going to call that u prime times e to the x plus, now leave the u alone, the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. Let's now go ahead, we need the second derivative because we need y double prime. y double prime would be equal to, okay, we need another product rule here. The derivative of the first function, well, the derivative of the first derivative will give us the second derivative. Leave the e to the x alone. Plus, now I have my y prime. Leave that alone. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Plus, we have another product rule when we do this term. Derivative of u is u prime. Come on back. Sorry about that, just give me one second here. Okay, so here we go. So then we get u prime e to the x plus u e to the x. And we can combine some like terms. So we have the following y double prime is equal to u double prime e to the x plus 2u prime e to the x plus u e to the x. We can now substitute this into our differential equation. So we have y double prime minus y equals to zero. That is u double prime e to the x plus two u prime e to the x plus u e to the x minus y, which is u e to the x equals to zero. Notice that these two terms will cancel and so we get u double prime e to the x plus 2u prime e to the x is equal to 0. We can factor out the e to the x. Looks like this. And now we can divide out by e to the x because e is never 0. So there's no harm in dividing both sides by that function. And so what we get is the following expression. We get u double prime plus 2y prime equals to 0. Now, this is a second-order differential equation in the variable u, but we can do the following thing. Let's go ahead and make a, a substitution. And the substitution we're going to make is let's let w equal u prime. If that's the case, then maybe I'll write this one like this. So I can think of um, this thing here. The, the second derivative is really the derivative of the first derivative. And then everywhere I see a u prime, we're going to replace it with the variable w. So this differential equation becomes y prime plus 2y equals 0. And now this is a first order linear ODE in the variable w. We spent a lot of time solving these. We know how to solve them by the use of an integrating factor. The integrating factor for this would be e to the integral of 2 dx, which would be e to the to the 2x. So we can multiply both sides uh, of the differential equation by e to the 2x. So I'm going to multiply everything by e to the 2x. W prime plus 2 W e to the 2x 
will be equal to 0 times e to the 2x. We know that that turns the left-hand side into a, a total derivative. That's the derivative of our integrating factor times the, the function w. We get 0 on the right-hand side. We're now going to go ahead and solve this by taking the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x. This is going to simply give us e to the 2x times w equals some constant. We divide both sides by 2x, divide both sides by 2x, and I'll write it like this. These cancel, so we get w equals some constant times e to the, to the 2x. And for reasons that might be a little bit more clear later, I'm actually going to call this C1, because we're going to have another constant coming here in one moment. So that's our solution W. But now, because we did a substitution, we have to back substitute to return to the original um, variable. So what was W equal to? Well, recall, W was equal to U prime. So really what we have is that U prime is equal to C1 e to the 2x, and now we can find u prime uh, by integrating both sides with respect to, to x. So to get rid of that derivative, we're going to integrate both sides dx. So I'm going to take the antiderivative of c1 e to the 2x. This would be equal to, um, whoops, should be on the other side. The antiderivative of u prime would be equal to the antiderivative of c1, e to the 2x. The antiderivative of u prime, well that's just going to be u, and this is going to be equal to, so you need to do a u substitution, but you're going to get c1 divided by 2 times e to the 2x, plus some other constant of integration, let's go ahead and call that um, c2. And I forgot that this should be, sorry, this should be a, a negative x. So now that we have our u, we have our second solution. So the second solution, if we come back up here, remember y was equal to u times our initial solution, y1. Therefore, we have y equals u, which is c1 divided by 2, e to the negative 2x plus c2 times y1, which was e to the x. And if I distribute that e to the x in, we get that y equals c1 divided by 2 e to the negative x, distributing this in, plus c2 e to the x. So this thing here, actually in general, this thing would be our general solution to that second order differential equation. These two functions, and you can check this, and we've done this in the past, but the function e to the negative x and the function e to the x are linearly independent. Recall, that's something you can check using the Ronskian. So this would be our general solution. The first solution we came up with was the, the, the y the y equals uh, e to the x. So the second part, the second solution, the one that was linearly independent, would have been that c1 divided by 2 e to the negative x. That is our uh, second solution that's linearly independent for this second order differential equation.